up until today, uh, 95 Tibetans inside Tibet have uh, given their life by setting themselves on fire and most of them are dead. Uh, this is the Tibetans' way of asserting their freedom in their country. And for the past 60 years, the Chinese government has been trying to uh, maintain control and where possible they used uh, guns and, and where possible they, they tried to use uh, what is called the law and maintain control. But I think the, um, the more uh, repressive the Chinese uh, government has been in Tibet, uh, the more they lost control and the more assertive the Tibetans have become. And it's very evident uh, in the way the relationship has completely gone to um, a position today where um, the relationship between the Chinese uh, government control in Tibet and the Tibetan people is that of uh, mistrust, fear and suspicion. And um, there is no future to this kind of a relationship. The Chinese government has been trying to maintain the control by use of uh, state media as a propaganda to make people believe in certain things that the Chinese government wants the Tibetan people to believe in. They may have been successful in China uh, up until now, but even in China today, with the growing number of uh, middle class with more money and with more information implements tools in their hands uh, the middle class Chinese which is actually the majority of the Chinese population they are gaining control today um, so the Chinese uh, uh, government's control both in China as well as in occupied countries like Tibet East Turkestan and Southern Mongolia is in a is in a crisis and what is evident is these cases of self emulations where the Chinese government has been trying to project to the outside world, especially at the time of the 18th Congress that was going on in November 2012, when the Chinese government has been trying to project itself as a very successful government with a smooth transition of power. Tibetans uh, came out in the largest number of uh, self-immolations which went almost to 30 numbers in just a period of one month. Uh, I want to explore into the whole idea of why Tibetans are giving their lives by immolating themselves, setting themselves on fire. The emulations in Tibet are driven by two main reasons. One, there is a brutal measure, systematic measure of oppression. Oppression by means of, uh, firstly, the maintenance of occupation force in the form of military, police, administration, and also bringing in um, the market economy which the Chinese people are practicing in Tibet. There are, so that market economy is further homogenizing the Tibetans and marginalizing the Tibetans. Um, this is a fear to the Tibetans. They feel that the market economy that Chinese government is trying to bring in into Tibet and also promising jobs and economic opportunities for the Chinese which are not there for Tibetans are further marginalize, marginalizing the Tibetans to not only to a minority but fear, fear that the Chinese population in Tibet is growing and the Tibetans may just end up completely a minority with no say. Not only there is a fear of that kind of marginalization, there is a fear that the Tibetans may not be able to practice their religion and the culture 
not only not able to practice, but there is a fear that it may be completely decimated. And this is coming in the form of, for example, how the Chinese government uh, um, in Qinghai province, for example, uh, in many parts of Amdo region of Tibet, Eastern Tibet, they try to replace Tibetan textbooks with Chinese textbooks. So this is a direct attack on the Tibetans uh, for their religion and culture. And language is key for any civilization. And therefore, Tibetans feel threatened. And when you are threatened, of course, you will defend your freedom. And you will assert that. Um, so, both in terms of um, economic, economic marginalization and cultural uh, threat to the Tibetan people, there is this oppression going on. Tibetan nomads and farmers who have been living on their ancestral land for all these thousands of years are today losing their land. The uh, miners using, con uh, using contract uh, businesses in relationship with Chinese government are buying land to mine gold, lithium, chromide and copper, especially in Kham and Amdu regions. So Tibetan nomads and farmers are losing land. The Chinese government is coming out with many other plans to build highways, railways, uh, bridges, dams, um, and thereby acquiring, acquiring more land. So Tibetan nomads and farmers are threatened. Nomadic and pastoral, pastoral and nomadic and um, uh, farmers' life is the very sustenance of the Tibetan people. And if that is threatened, the very survival of the Tibetan people comes under threat. And therefore, Tibetans feel that they have to assert their identity. They have to assert their freedom. And they, they will not uh, be beaten. And therefore, the Tibetans felt that they have to assert this. This is the time. And when Tibetans go to the courts, the courts are overruled by the Communist Party. The Communist Party of China uh, overrules most of the uh, court decisions, even in China. That is why Chinese people are unable to address their um, judicial problems uh, in, in the courts. Because courts are overruled by the party. It's happening in Tibet also. So there is no way to address your problems in the courts. The media is owned by state. The state-owned media acts as state's propaganda machinery and does not reflect the common people's aspiration. Common people cannot go to any media to talk to, talk to about their problems. And the government, instead of listening to the common people's problems, would try to impose on the people their administrative policies. So where do the common people go in a state like this? For a long time, even after 2008, um, there has been a huge censorship on the international media. Media from outside have been either discouraged or even physically banned to travel to Tibet. International travelers, wherever they go, they are monitored of their activities, their movements. And in the past six months, international media and travelers have been completely banned from traveling into Tibet. Now this leaves the Tibetan people completely cornered and nowhere to go. And even if they die, the news is not going to be going up. And therefore, um, there have been cases of protests, in the street protests, in uh, Serta, for example. Uh, and when these protests happen, the Chinese government security forces will go, shoot, kill the people, 
clean up the dead bodies and pre pretend as if nothing happened. That is why when you are oppressed by all these systems of the, of the Chinese colonial power and when your voices of freedom has been censored and banned, you are left with nothing to do other than set yourselves on fire to protest that I'm willing to die, but I'm not going to will, I'm not willing to live under this kind of oppression. And these self-emulators, 95 of them in Tibet, have said this statement that it is that we give our life so that those who are living can live in freedom. And these are as Tibetans, as Buddhists, non-violent ways of asserting their freedom. One of the um, self-emulators said that the pain and the suffering that I'm going to undergo by setting myself on fire is nothing compared to the Tibetan people living in this oppression every day. So this has actually brought to us to this level where there is no other options left for the Tibetan people. Completely cornered up in the mountains and therefore they give their lives like this. Of course there have been a number of uh, questions both from, you know, from the international media and also the Chinese government has been making their own comments about uh, the self-emulations. But everybody must listen to what the Tibetans in Tibet are saying. And all these slogans or the last testaments that, that the emulators have left behind in, in the form of uh, written words or oral uh, testaments or even spoken on the video, how they have very strongly said that as they give their life, they want one, freedom for Tibet, Two, return of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. These are the two uh, statements, last words given by all these self emulators in Tibet. And we must listen to that. The Chinese government has been saying that you know, these are cases of uh, people who have personal problems. But not 95 people will have personal problems. This actually goes down to say that the Chinese government does not care about the people of Tibet. That they, the Chinese government does not care what the problems are being faced by Tibetan people. If the Chinese government truly are, are caring about the Tibetan people, even if there is one case of self-immolation, the Chinese government must recognize that as a failure of the state listen to their grievances and it's not just one or two or ten or twenty but ninety-five and I'm completely uh, horrified by the way the Chinese government has been treating all these cases of self emulations they have no respect to their people they have no sensitivity to feel how the people in Tibet are being oppressed. The Chinese government made no effort to go to the people and ask what are the problems. They must recognize that it is not just one or two people or a couple of people who are setting themselves on fire.